Hello, Hull Champions. Today, we're going to talk about the number one way that you destroy your liver every day. And a lot of people don't know that they're doing it. And if you look at the first four letters in the world, liver, it spells out live. So this really is an organ that you want to pay attention to and take good care of if you want to live. And liver disease and acute liver failure causes a number of fatalities every year. In the United States, it's 50,000 people a year die from acute liver failure, and around the world, it's 2 million people. Now, when we talk about the causes, there are some diseases that can cause or contribute to liver failure. So viral hepatitis, for example, it's a viral infection of the liver that causes a chronic inflammation. That's what the word itis means, inflammation. And this is a huge stress, huge burden on the liver. Other diseases that can cause this are scarring of the bile ducts. You could have autoimmune hepatitis, again, an autoimmune disease that attacks the liver and causes inflammation. And besides viral infections, you could also have parasitic infections. And of course, no list is complete without cardiovascular disease and type 2 diabetes. It's a metabolic disease that clogs up the liver, that causes inflammation, and contributes to most kinds of disease, actually. Now, some of these, you're sort of mostly unlucky if you get exposed to it, if you're in a unfortunate circumstances where you get some viral hepatitis or some autoimmune disease. Now, you can do a lot in terms of lifestyle, just eating good food, reducing stress, taking the best care of yourself, and these may not go away, but you will manage them much, much better. But then there are others, and we'll talk a little bit more later, about cardiovascular disease and type 2 diabetes, where this is almost entirely up to you that you can do a lot about this. Whereas with cardiovascular disease, there are some genetic factors that predispose you for a small percentage of people. For most people, it is entirely about lifestyle and type two diabetes is entirely about lifestyle. So the other factors we wanna talk about obviously are lifestyle choices. So these are further causes, but these are something that you can do a lot about. Alcohol abuse used to be by far, it used to be almost the only thing that caused cirrhosis of the liver and liver failure. Today, it is just one among many. So we have sugar, for example, and in the sugar, there is the fructose component. When we're talking about uh, white crystal sugar, table sugar, or any of the derivatives of syrup or agave or corn syrup, etc. 50% of that is fructose, which is very different from rice or bread. Not that those are great, but the really devastating component is the fructose. Another big factor is drug abuse. Heavy drug use is tremendously stressful on the liver because anything foreign that you put into the body has to be biotransformed. It has to be changed and processed and detoxified by the liver. Another one that is getting more and more attention is processed omega-6 seed oils, the things we eat and consume as vegetable oils like corn oil and soybean oil and safflower oil, etc. When we have a very large amount of oil, which Soybean oil, we consume over 40 liters per year per person in the United States. That's an enormous amount. When we eat a lot of these and they're highly processed and they're high in omega-6, now we unbalance the ratio of fatty acids in the body. We put the body in an inflammatory state. And again, this affects the liver. And I want to put cardiovascular disease and type 2 diabetes on here again under lifestyle choices. Even though we often consider them as diseases, disease states, we want to understand how much control we have over these, that they're almost purely lifestyle choices. Another thing you want to avoid, obviously, is smoking because it robs the body of oxygen. It blocks the red blood cells that carry oxygen to all the cells. And in doing that, 
it reduces the utilization of oxygen in every cell of the body and therefore it interferes with the function of every cell in the body. And then I want to bring a lot of attention to medication as causes of liver failure because a lot of people think that the only ones you have to be careful with are the prescription medication, that they are more safeguarded because they have more side effects. And therefore they think that the over-the-counter, the OTC, that there's nothing really to worry about. If they sell them everywhere, how bad can it be? And that's something that we really need to watch for. Now, to really understand what causes liver failure, we need to also understand what does the liver do? What's its daily job? So it participates in digestion with making bile to emulsify and break down fats. And then the main thing that people think about is biotransformation or detox. It, takes some really harmful compounds and it attaches things to them in several different steps to make them water soluble and less harmful so we can flush them out. And this biotransformation is super important. You would not live many hours or many days if this didn't happen. And there is internal and there are external toxins. So some of them are part just of a natural form of metabolism, but then we have to add to that all of the pesticides and the environmental pollutants that we've added in the least last several decades. It also breaks down cholesterol, it regulates cholesterol, it gets rid of old bad cholesterol and it makes new cholesterol. Any hormone that your body produces, the liver has to break that down and get rid of it because everything is supposed to exist and do its thing for a specific time. It also has to break down all the metabolic waste that we generate through our chemical processes in the body, as well as from all the drugs and other chemicals that we add. The liver is also the main organ that breaks down and processes and metabolizes all the macronutrients that you eat, the fat, the protein, and the carbohydrates. It also serves as a reservoir for glycogen to replenish blood sugar between meals. And in doing that, it helps to balance out our fuel and energy levels. So all in all, the liver performs all of this and there's a total of over 500 different chemical reactions that the liver is responsible for. And here's the key thing that we need to understand about that. So often in medicine and in science, we try to isolate things and we look at one specific thing at a time, one process, one pathway, as if it happened in isolation. But that is the key to understand that the liver does all of this, but it doesn't do one at a time. It does all of this all the time. So I want to show you one of the most helpful concepts that I have seen I didn't come up with this, but I've used it for years and years in explaining health and it's called body burden. That when you have different things going on, they accumulate, they pile on top of each other. So we have down at the bottom is the metabolic waste that's unavoidable. Once you metabolize food and things from the environment, you put things in on one end, different things come out on the other end, you make tissues, etc. that produces waste. So there's no way around that and the liver has to do that. Then on top of that, we have the hormones that the body produces that have to be broken down. I call them endohormones for endogenous hormones coming from the inside. But then now we have to add to that exohormones or exogenous things that are added from the outside in animal feed and we get it through drinking water, etc. And then the body has to break down all the environmental toxins, whether it's industrial pollution and heavy metals or something that we spray on foods or household cleaners. It is all foreign chemicals that the body has to get rid of and the liver is the one who does it. Alcohol, of course, is a burden. It is something relatively natural in very small amounts, but large amounts frequently now become 
a huge burden on the liver. And like we talked about, fructose, the component of sugar that only the liver can metabolize, becomes a huge burden. So as these things accumulate and the liver only has so much capacity, only so much resources, only so many cells, only so much ATP or cellular energy available, we eventually get to a threshold and the liver can work up to this point. But if we exceed that, now we're in trouble. Now the liver falls behind and some of the cells can actually get damaged and now we can have liver failure. So now if we add medication, if we take something on top, now that could push us over the threshold, over the limit. But then we also have to realize that not everyone is the same, that this could be a 30 year old young person. What if we're a little older? What if we have other comorbidities? What if we have a less favorable genetic makeup? Then maybe our 100% would fall a lot lower. And now we see these pieces it doesn't take nearly as many pieces to reach that threshold. And then if we start adding more, now we're going to reach that liver failure or that liver disease or compromise much sooner. And the reason that I put medication at the top here is not that it's the only cause because everything here contributes. And I'm not claiming that these would be to scale, that they would be proportional to their size or anything like that. They're purely examples of different things that the body have to deal with to give you an idea. But if we're going to talk about the number one cause of liver failure, then it is very, very often quoted as being acetaminophen. And that is, of course, the ingredient in Tylenol. So we know that acetaminophen is a problem for the liver and we know that Tylenol is often called out to be the number one cause of liver failure. So a lot of people would avoid that. But what a lot of people don't realize is that there's many, many things that contain acetaminophen like NyQuil, DayQuil are some examples, Excedrin, Alka-Seltzer Plus and Mucinex, as well as Robitussin. And these are just some examples. So you may be very cautious about Tylenol. You might try to take just when it's absolutely necessary, but then you may not think about the others. Or you might take one of them and not realize that when you combine it with something else, now you're adding, it, it accumulates. Now, what about the others if they don't contain acetaminophen? Well, there is ibuprofen is another active ingredient which we find in Advil and in dozens of other things. We have naproxen which we find in Aleve and then there's good old aspirin and all of these are very much associated with stomach distress causing leaky gut, stomach inflammation, all sorts of upset intestinal tract. But just because they're associated mostly with stomach doesn't mean that they're not harmful to the liver. They are less harmful than acetaminophen, but they also are very stressful. They put a severe burden, significant burden on the liver as well. And this is especially if you use them in combination with something. So if you're using ibuprofen along with something else from that other list, now that combination is always a bigger burden than one thing by itself. And this is especially true if you already have some kind of compromise. If you're already getting closer to that 100% line, then you need to be very careful with these as well. So here's a couple of facts for you. And if they're too shocking to believe, then just go look them up and verify them for yourself. Acetaminophen is the most common cause of acute liver failure in the United States. And number two is an overdose of acetaminophen can destroy half of a person's liver cells 
in less than a week. So we need to understand that even though they're over-the-counter drugs, even though they're sold to anybody for a few dollars without a prescription, it doesn't mean that they're harmless. These are things that we need to take very seriously. And if you use them at all, you use them when they're absolutely necessary. Now, on the bright side, the liver is probably the organ in the body that has the best regenerative capacity of any organ. So even if you kill off half of the liver cells, the liver can regenerate. So as long as we don't have a bunch of those other conditions, other, other stressors present, and the person is generally fairly healthy, then in about a month's time, the liver can regenerate itself. And after that, if there are no other complications, we may not see any damage at all. But I want to bring you back to this graph really quickly and help you understand the number one way to destroy your liver and to destroy your health overall is to not understand that out of all of these things that I have listed, and this is just for the liver, they're slightly different for your overall health, but not really very much, that the first two here, the metabolic waste and the endogenous hormones, those are the only ones that our ancestors had. Those are the only ones that are supposed to be in the body. Everything else in this red rectangle are things that we have added. These are man-made. They are the result of civilization, of industrialization, of the willingness or incentive to use chemicals and artificial things and put them in our bodies. And our ancestors didn't have any of these because the world has changed more in the last 50 years than it has in the previous 50,000. And if we don't understand that, and if we don't start cleaning up our lifestyle and eliminating some of these man-made things, that is the number one way that we hurt ourselves. If you enjoyed this video, you're going to love that one. And if you truly want to master health by understanding how the body really works, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell, and turn on all the notifications so you never miss a life-saving video.